Okay, welcome back. We previously said that probability plays an important role when we have to make decisions in the face of uncertainty. In statistics, we make use of probability to do statistical inference. Statistical inference is a process whereby we generalize sample data findings to the population. So probability actually forms the bridge between um, summary statistics for sample data and the population. For example, new medical products are constantly being developed. Now suppose a new drug is developed for a specific disease. Researchers want to know whether this drug is effective in treating patients. So they will select a sample of patients with this specific disease and determine what proportion of the patients showed an improvement. And then they use this proportion to estimate how effective the drug is for the population of patients with this disease. Probability is the tool that the researchers use to express how much confidence they have in this estimate. Now in this lecture we are going to look at a few definitions when we work with probability. First of all, a random experiment is a process that results in one of a number of possible outcomes, but the exact outcome cannot be predicted with certainty. The sample space of an experiment is a list of all the possible outcomes of the experiment. These outcomes must be mutually exclusive and exhaustive. That just means that these outcomes cannot occur simultaneously and that they encompass the entire range of possible outcomes. Let's look at a few examples. If our experiment is to flip a coin, then our sample space is a list of all the possible outcomes. So our sample space in this case would be heads and tails. Okay, the next example, when we roll a die, then the sample space will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. When we observe a customer's preference between product A and product B, then our sample space will be prefer A, prefer B or indifferent. If we observe the time in minutes that a flight is delayed and we assume that a flight that is delayed by more than three hours is cancelled, then our sample space will be the interval from 0 to 180. Now the 180 is just 3 times 60, the 3 hours times 60 minutes, so that's where we get the 180 from. Individual outcomes in a sample space are called the simple events. Simple events cannot be broken down any further. However, we can find a combination of one or more simple events and then we call that an event. The notation that we use is we use a capital letter to, to denote an event and the curly bracket notation to list the simple events that comprise this event. For example, if we define the event A as the event that an uneven number is observed when rolling a die, then we can write it like this. My event A is, and then we list the simple events that comprise this event. So that will be 1, 3, and 5. Okay, some more notation. P of A denote the proba probability of event A. Now what exactly do we mean by the probability of an event? There are three approaches to determine the probability of a certain event. The first approach is the classical definition. So this is when an experiment has n simple events, which are all equally likely, then the probability of a specific outcome is just 1 over n. Let's look at this example. When we roll a die, what is the probability to get any specific outcome, let's say a 6? We know that there are six possibilities, six simple events in this sample space. They are all equally likely. So the probability to get a 6 or a 3 or a 2 is just 1 over n, in this case 1 over 6. 
Another approach is the relative frequency approach, which expresses an outcome's probability as its relative frequency when the experiment is um, performed a large number of times. So if x is the number of times that an outcome occurred in n trials of the experiment, then the relative frequency is given by x over n. So the relative frequency approach to probability is that the probability of outcome E is the relative frequency x over n when our n is large. So this limit n goes to infinity just means that our n becomes large. In this example, if 850 of the last 1000 customers entering a shop made a purchase, what is the probability that the next customer entering the store will make a purchase? So our n here is a thousand and our x, the, um, the number of times that the outcome occurred is 850. So according to the relative frequency definition, the probability is 850 over a thousand, which is 0 0.85. In practical situations, all possible outcomes are not always equally likely, so the classical definition cannot be used. And there's also no history of repetition of the experiment, so that means that the relative frequency approach is also not valid. In such cases, probability is assigned according to the subjective approach. Now, the subjective definition means that the probability assigned to an outcome reflects the degree to which we believe that an outcome will occur. For example, what is the probability that your business will survive the recession? If you are confident that your business will survive the recession or that your business has a good chance of surviving, then you can say that the probability is about 90%. Or if you are pessimistic, then you can say, no, I think that the probability that this business will survive the recession is 0.3 or 30 percent. So the subjective approach is done by an expert in that specific field. Requirements of probability. When we assign probabilities to each simple event in a sample space, then the probabilities must satisfy two basic requirements. First of all, the probability of any simple event must lie between 0 and 1 inclusive. So that just means that you can never get a negative probability and that the probability can never exceed 1. You can never get a probability of more than 1 or 100%. And then the second requirement, if we add the probabilities of all the simple events in a sample space, then they must add up to 1. Since an event is a collection of simple events, we can now use the probabilities of the simple events to find the probability of an, an event which is, um, is made up of simple events. For example, if event A is the sum, um, or rather the probability of event A is the sum of the probabilities assigned to the simple events comprising A. So if A is again the event to get an odd number, then we know according to the classical definition that the probability for each of the simple events comprising um, A is 1 over 6. Therefore the probability of A is just the sum of the probabilities of these simple events. So it must be 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6, which is just 3 over 6. Thank you. Um, I hope that you find this useful and we will continue in the next lecture by looking at Venn diagrams.